Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about number four from the chapter 4C homework, problem 4.69, which a lot of you asked about and a lot of you uh, had some confusion about. And for this particular one, I think a lot of the confusion was just how complicated the situation is and how many different unknowns there seem to be. So if you talk to me about this individually, the very first thing I would have said was make a drawing of the situation because it's pretty complicated. Um, and then use that to start figuring out what to do. So let's do that. We've got a red cart and a green cart, both traveling at speed V on a low friction, a low friction track. They're approaching each other head on. So we've got red and green coming towards each other at the same speeds. The red cart is moving to the right. The green cart, whose inertia is three times that of the red cart, is moving to the left. Okay, this is already getting pretty complicated. Uh, a black cart, oh, there's a third one. Uh, that has a spring on its left end and putty on its right end sits on the track between the two moving carts. Wow, the moving cart hits the black cart at the same instant. After the collision, the red cart moves left at speed V and the green and the black carts move together at speed V over five. Yeah, this is a legitimately pretty complicated problem. Let's start drawing it out. We've got the red carts. Um, we don't know its inertia and this whole problem is about figuring out the inertia of something. So let's make a variable to represent it. We'll call it M sub R. We don't know what it is. Uh, it's going to the right at speed V to begin with. Then we've got the green one. Uh, it's gonna be a head on collision. So they're heading towards each other. So the green one is over here, moving um, to the left, also at speed V to the same initial speed going the opposite direction. We don't know its inertia, um, but we do know that its inertia is three times that of the red one. So I'm just gonna go right in and write three times M sub R is the inertia of that cart. There's a lot bigger. And then the black one must be in the middle. So the red and the green one aren't actually gonna hit each other. They're gonna hit the black one. And then we've got, uh, the black one is the one that we're trying to find the inertia of. That's the whole question. If you scroll down here, what's the inertia of the black cart expressed as a multiple of the inertia of the red cart? So that means we're, when we're done, we're gonna get an answer that's like, M sub B equals 12 times M sub R or something like that. The, the exact number right there is the thing that we're looking for. Um, okay, but the black cart has a spring on its left end and a piece of putty on its right end. And those two things are there just to tell you because we don't really know anything yet in our physics knowledge about springs or about putty, just to know that uh, the left end is bouncy and the right end is sticky. Which from the beginning of our chapter five knowledge, a little bit ahead of this, we know something about, okay, the left one's gonna be kind of elastic, maybe not perfectly elastic, and the right one's gonna be kind of like inelastic. Okay, so this is the whole situation before the collision. We're gonna, we've got some information in the problem about what's gonna happen after the collision. Um, because it's really all about inertia, this, we need to figure out what's the momentum of the whole system before the collision. So before, P initial, the total inertia, and total momentum is, okay, there, there's the red one going to the right, so, M sub R times V. That one's plus because it's going to the right. Then there's three times M sub R going to the left, minus three M sub R times V going to the left. And the black one's not moving. So like if you want to write that in, that's a plus zero. So that's the whole momentum before. Okay, I can simplify that expression because it's the same inertia variable in both of those. So simplifying that, the total momentum before is minus two M sub R times V. Cool. Now we know everything we need to know for, about the before situation. Let's write down what we know about the after situation. So afterwards we have, we should probably do another drawing. 
Afterwards, we have the red one going back to the left. And uh, the cart is moving left at speed V. So the red one actually turns around going exactly the same speed it was going before. And then the black and the green one are now stuck together by that putty that was between them. And they're going with a speed of V over five over five, but we actually don't know what direction it's going yet. It doesn't say. The green and black carts move together at speed V over five. So it's either right or left question. But we do know a little bit about the inertia of that combined object now. So that is whatever the inertia of the black one is plus three times the inertia of the red one because the green inertia didn't change. It's just now being added in together to the black one. Um, OK, so is there some way we can figure out what direction this combined object is going, since they didn't tell us? Yes, there is. Um, it com the clue comes in the, iner the momentum before the collision. The momentum before the collision was minus 2 mv. So that means after the collision, the total momentum still has to be pointing to the left. And there isn't enough momentum in this red one to account for the two MVs that need to be going to the left. So that means there needs to be more momentum going to the left than is there in the red one. It must be coming from the combined object. So it's actually so we actually can tell it's going to the left too. So erase that arrow. It's going to the left. All right, let's write out our expression for the final momentum of the whole system. That is going to be minus m sub r times v from the red one, minus uh, m sub b plus 3 m sub r times v over 5. OK, so that's an expression for the total momentum after the collision. That's an expression for the total momentum before the collision. And then we know the big idea of the whole chapter and really the whole year is momentum is always conserved, no matter what kind of collision. So even though we have this really complicated situation with all sorts of things going on, there's springs and putty and three different carts and all of that stuff, put it all together, the momentum cannot change, period. Because there's nothing else outside of those three things for them to interact with. So that means that this expression for the initial momentum has to be equal to this momentum for the final momentum. Okay, so that gives us a, a full equation. Let's put those together. Minus 2 m sub r times v equals, that's the before, minus m sub r times v minus m sub b plus 3 m sub r times v over 5. And at this point, what we've got is an algebra problem. We're solving for the inertia of the black cart. And we got there by using our physical principles. The momentum has to be conserved by using our drawings to understand what the situation was so we can make those expressions in the first place. So we've turned a physical problem into a math problem. This is the, um, the less complicated part. But you need to trust yourself that you can do this because it still looks kind of bad. Um, there, there seems like there's a ton of variables and we're not used to that in physics problems. You're used to numbers being there. This is one of the first ones I've given you where it's really much more abstract. Everything is a variable. Okay, so we're gonna solve for that and we wanna get everything else over on the other side. Let's see, all right, so my algebra skills, I noticed that everything's negative. So if everything's negative, I can cancel out all those. That's like divided by negative one. Okay. And then I also noticed that 2m sub r times v and m sub r times v are exactly the same expression, so I can move that over to the other side. So that gives me m sub r times v on the left equals m sub b times v over 5 plus 3 m sub r times v over 5. Okay, 
system closer. So I want to get this thing over onto the left-hand side. I don't really like the fractions. Um, I noticed something else that I can cancel out though, so I can make this expression look nicer to me, look easier to deal with. And that is that there's a V in every single piece. So that means I can cancel that V out. So V, V, V. Incidentally, that tells you that whatever that initial velocity is doesn't actually matter. Um, the, the problem is constrained enough by everything else going on that the, whatever that initial velocity is isn't going to affect what that inertia was. OK, so then what else can I do with this? Well, I've got to move this thing over to the left-hand side, so let's do that. So that's m sub r plus 3 fifths m sub r equals 1 fifth m sub b. So now I need to add the, those fractions together or something and then deal with that 5. Um, well, here's a simple thing I can do. I can get rid of that fraction by multiplying by 5 in every single term. Um, so multiply every term by 5, and that gets rid of the fractions, and I get 5 m sub r plus 3 m sub r equals m sub b. And then you can see it right there, m sub b must be eight times m sub r. So I told you a while ago we were going to end up with an expression like m sub b equals some number times m sub r. I guess 12. Turns out that it's eight. So that black one is eight times more inertiaful than the others, than the, than the red one. So eight times m sub r. And ah, I have made a mistake. Um, and I'll be honest, I um, I paused for a moment in the recording so I could uh, track it down. Um, probably I, I should have just shown you the live, the whole process of figuring it out, but it took a few minutes. You maybe you didn't want to watch all of that, but I made a sign mistake at some point. So um, what happens is right here. Notice that that is a plus 3 fifths m sub r times v. And then it showed up over on the left-hand side of the equation as also a plus 3, 3 fifths m sub r. So I need to change that to a minus right there, which makes this a minus, which makes this twice m sub r. Um, so we all make our sign mistakes. That happens. Um, one of my rules all along has been it's okay to make mistakes, and this is part of why I don't like pay close attention to the points that this mastering system gives you, because um, it happens. But it's a good idea not to just like randomly move things around. You need to have a theory about what's wrong. So what I did in in order to verify for myself is I went all the way back up to the top and I made sure one step at a time. Did I have this right? Okay, yeah. Did I have that right? Yep. Did I have that right? Yep. Did I have that right? Oh, wait, that, there we go. Um, you can also work the other direction and say, okay, if this is right, is that this consistent with this? If this is right, is that consistent with that? So you can track backwards. But at some point you'll find whatever your mistake was. It is not a good idea to just randomly put different numbers in or say, oh, I must have flipped the sign or something like that. Because that's not really a theory about what the problem was. Okay, so I have a clear theory. I made a sign mistake right there. I have now fixed it. I think that the, it's twice the inertia. So let me fix this and change that to a two and see if I'm doing all right. Much better. Okay, there you have it. We've done this by working through the problem, doing the algebra, find the result, fixing mistake. Um, all right.